Hey everybody, Kathy McLeish coming to you here with Alcoholism Unpacked. And today's question is, whose fault is it that you're drinking like you're drinking? And when I ask that, I can feel that from the depths of my heart because before I got sober, I got sober at 27, before I got sober, that was my gig. He was alcoholic, my husband was alcoholic, and I, and I could hide everything behind his drinking because he drank differently than me. His consequences were a little bit more visible. He drank and passed out. He drank and didn't come home. And here I was, this self-righteous alcoholic that did the makeup game. I will make up for him. But in the meantime, I'm drinking all day long. I'm reacting to everything that's going on around me, the pressure of four kids, the fact that my husband isn't doing what he's supposed to be doing. I'm reacting and everybody is feeling my alcoholism 100% in their life. So whose fault is it that you're still drinking? I could look back and I could say, I grew up in a really strict home, 10 kids. My parents never had any obvious addictions. And I would have to say, I can't really blame things on my parents, but did that stop me from blaming things on my parents? No, it did not. I was always looking outside of myself for some reason that I was acting the way that I was. And that is an alcoholic mechanism. That is kind of like a safety mechanism that we use to keep ourselves alive. Because if we had to look at everything we were doing and take ownership of it, we would probably not want to live. So here's what's happening in the alcoholic's mind. I put alcohol in my system. Alcohol goes into my bloodstream. I start to act in a different way, not even according to my values maybe or who I have been raised to be. And then I have to start to look for excuses why that is because drinking is my safety net. Drinking is what helps me to cope with my life, whatever's going on in my life. And if I take that away, I don't have my crutch. So I need to protect that crutch. And in order to do that, I will have to blame other people for what I'm doing and how I'm acting. So it may be the boss, it may be my wife, it may be my husband, it may be what's going on with my children. It could be that dad that I had that was alcoholic. I have worked with a lot of people and a lot of women and men that have worked with my husband have had such incredible, horrible, heart-wrenching stories that you could drink because of any of them. And yet, it's our life and what we do with our life at some point is under our control. I can remember a story in my sober life and there was a man and he was being just reamed out by his son and his son was telling him what a piece of crap he was, what a, a useless father he was, how he did not show up, how he basically abandoned him in his childhood with his drinking. And that was why this 40 year old man was struggling the way he was, unable to keep a job, unable to maintain a relationship, a family life, a home, unable to show up and be the person he wanted to be because of what his father did to his childhood. Now, you would expect that the father would just like say nothing or walk away with his head bowed in shame, but you know, the father had heard it for years and years and years. And the father put his shoulders back and he said, you are right. I was a loser. I was a horrible dad. I was not there for you. I didn't teach you any of the things you needed to know. As a grown up man, as a father, as a husband, I was not there. Alcoholism took everything that I had to give you and it went into the bottle. And what are you gonna do about that? You are 40 years old. Every decision you make is now your own. You need to start owning those decisions and making the ones that are gonna give you the life that I stole from you. Give you the rest of your life, the life that you would like to have one decision at a time. Leave me in the past. Leave what I did in the past. I am sorry, and we cannot change that. But you have the power to change who you are today with each decision that you make. Please make different decisions. Make the decisions that serve you. Stop making the decisions that keep our past alive, tormenting you and haunting you so that you cannot have the life you deserve to have. 
And that is my message today, that at some point, no matter what has happened, and everything is relative, and if it has been catastrophic and you need therapy, I have gone to therapy, I have gone to counselors, I have gone to doctors, I have had coaches and mentors and sponsors, I have worked different programs from the bottom up and back down again and up again three and four times, and I have had to reclaim my present day circumstances, choices, and own them and make them as the ones that serve me, as the ones that benefit me, and give me the life that I want to have. I have been sober 38 years, and I still have demons. I still have things that say, you can't do this. You won't do this. You aren't capable of doing this. You don't deserve this life. You are not worthy, Kathy. And those demons are laid to rest with every action that I take to counteract their voice. So at some point, I have to make that choice. I have to reclaim my life because that's what it is. It is my life. Whether I'm 27, 37, 45, 56, it is my life and I can go forward as I see fit, not by myself because if those voices have been giving me these messages, selling me these stories for decades, then I'm not gonna run up against them and be successful tomorrow. I am going to have to find some kind of support system, some kind of therapy, some kind of help that is going to help me to counteract those stories, get them out on the table, find out that they are not real, let them go because they no longer serve me, and replace them with the things that are going to help me to go forward. I need new messages. I need a new path. I need new direction. And that is going to come from somebody that has gone before me and successfully done what I want to do. So who is keeping you drunk? Maybe I was keeping myself drunk. Maybe not wanting to take those actions, not wanting to face those demons. And I am here to tell you in all honesty, nothing that I was afraid to face was anywhere near as bad as I thought, or as bad as not facing it, and continuing to live the life with these voices telling me lies every day, and then my subconscious taking the action to follow those lies and give myself the life that I felt I didn't deserve anyways. And so the point of change is here. It's a matter of owning my life, my choices, and taking the next step to live the way that I want to live today, tomorrow, next month, and next year. So please, Kathy McLeish, Alcoholism Unpacked, just talking today a little bit about where our alcoholism comes from and when we're going to take responsibility and control and turn that around. It just might be today. Thanks.